Alright, for today's video we're going to be setting up the pedal board. Recently sold a couple pedals, picked up a few new pedals, just traded for the Digitech Drop yesterday, traded an Epiphone SG for it. Recent additions, we've got the Seven Sisters Ivy Distortion, can't really see it there with the glare. There we go, the Ivy Distortion, very cool pedal and the Noisemaker Industries Borealis Reverb, also a very cool pedal, also very lightweight. I might do a specific review just on this pedal, but I was shocked that it just doesn't weigh anything. But anyways, pedal board there is from SoCal Pedal Boards, bought it on Etsy. I believe it ran about 75 bucks, plus or minus 15. I honestly can't remember, I've had it for quite some time. We have a bunch of random patch cables. This is just half of the daisy chain. The actual power supply that connects to the wall part don't have out here because I don't need it. But anyways, we've got all our pedals. A pro tip, if you're looking for Velcro, Velcro is a brand name. You'll pay more. The actual product is called Hook and Loop. So if you just search for hook and loop, you can find big boxes of it very, very cheap. And that's what just about everyone uses on their pedal boards, including myself. And another pro tip when making pedal boards or designing your pedal board, always use the same side of the Velcro or the hook and loop. Always use the same side on the board itself. So all of these are the soft side, the loop side of the hook and loop. And then you can easily swap out pedals, move them around on your board whenever you need to if they all have the soft side down and the rough side on the pedal, or vice versa. Obviously, it doesn't matter which way you do it. The order of pedals, we can talk about that. There's a ton of different options, and honestly, most of it is personal opinion, and it doesn't really matter. There's a few sort of standard rules in the way I'm going to be setting this up. I'm going to do the drop pedal first, which seems to be sort of the standard that most people say drop type effects or octave effects do those first. And then all of my drives, so we've got the death metal, we've got the custom blues driver, we've got the seven sisters and the saxo skulls, so all of the drives and then reverb at the end and the noise gate in between the reverb and the drive. So that one I've kind of gone back and forth on which order to put those in, but basically you don't really want to gate the reverb, you just want to gate the fuzz from the drives. So that's where it'll go. So let's get it all wired up and check her out. All right, the pedal board is almost all wired up and ready to go. My faithful helper with me, Ichabod Crane and her little fish. There she is. Fun fact, she always helps me change strings, and by help I mean she causes innumerable problems. Every time I change strings, this little cat, Ichabod Crane, always tries to steal my guitar strings and run off with them. But anyways, back to the pedal board. Another pro tip to make it just easy, especially if this is your first pedal board, you've never set one up before, what makes it simple is when you're ready to actually put the pedal down, go ahead and remove that. So if you can hear it's sticky, go ahead and remove the protective coating, the little plastic, whatever, over the back side of the Velcro and line it up. And then all you have to do is line your pedal up visually and push it down. And then you're done. You don't have to worry about measuring out the Velcro or anything like that. And you've got all your pedals set up. And the way I'm going to run this signal chain, or that I hope I'm going to run this signal chain, we'll see if my pile of uh, random patch cables there has enough of the right sizes. But I'm hoping to go drop pedal through the blues driver into the skulls, down to the death metal, over to the ivy, up to the noise gate, over to the Borealis, back through the bottom, and then out. So this board has a little port on the side, as most boards do. But that's how we're going to try to wire this thing up. We'll see if it works out. Another fun fact, 
this IV distortion does not need to be plugged into a power supply. And no, it does not have onboard battery either. It's just analog. So that's pretty cool. You charge it up with the power supply once overnight and it lasts, according to the company, to seven sisters, it lasts for 220 hours of playtime, which is pretty considerable. So if you're using pedals like that, it makes it way easier because you don't need all these daisy chain power supply cables or anything like that. But let's get it wired up. All right, a close-up view here. Got the pedal board on my lap. All the connections wired. And just one thing of note, some people do. I personally do not like to, but some people, if they're doing kind of this circular pattern like I am now, which not everybody does, they'll take this pedal and just flip it upside down so that your in and out can kind of come from here straight down. Whereas otherwise, my out on the Saxo Skulls is up here on the top left. And then the input, it's even labeled, on the death metal is on this bottom right. If you flip it upside down, you can go straight down, straight under, and in. I just don't personally like the look of that, so I've never done it. Some people will also go from the top left, diagonally, stretching across under the board. I like this circular pattern. It's just kind of nice. I also, when I have small frame pedals, these mini pedals like this, I like to put them across the bar, but that's just how my pedal board lines up. So all pedal boards are different, of course. But here it is. We've got it all wired up. So we start with the drop, go to the blues driver, into the skulls, down to the death metal, over to the Seven Sisters Ivy, up into the Donner noise gate, and over to the Borealis and then this will be the output so I'm gonna do if I have another uh, 90 degree jack put a 90 degree jack up into there drop it down and then it'll go out a little hole on the side there and see my cool slippers too alright next step get it wired up for power and then we are ready to test it out alright we're back Boards all wired up, powered, everything ready to go. Let's mess around on it a little bit. We've got the Legator Ninja 7 in drop A right now. And there's our just clean tone coming out of the Boss Katana 50 watt. And let's just kind of fiddle around if we shall.
There you have it. That's the board. See you next time.